So the first question is going to be introduce yourself. Yeah. My name is Pradhyan Mishir and I have recently passed out from JCRC Foundation. Mm -hmm. Here. Mm -hmm. I am now based in Ajmer, where I work at SBMP. Uh, we are Asia's leading uh, manufacturer of screen machines. And about my family, sir, uh, we are a family of four. My father is a construction consultant, and my, my mother is a housewife. And my sister is not currently preparing for the, the medical exam, uh, and she is in class 12. And so, my hobbies are uh, following current affairs. Mainly international affairs. I like them. I think that the second is I like running and uh, mainly calisthenics. Okay. And self, self okay. So the next question is why did you join the work and not go for higher studies? I joined work because I thought uh, I realized that. Uh, I didn't know how to even uh, calibrate a uh, board weight. So that's what, what the level was uh, which I um, which college gave me. So I thought I should uh, take at least three years of that experience and then go for high school. Okay, but higher studies was part of your plan? Yeah, it, it is still now. But I want to do it in uh, and naval architecture okay so then if suppose work and everything is going well why do you want to leave is it a sign no, that huh? no, no sir uh, it says that i am here to uh, if i enter some way in machinery i will also learn the maintenance uh, when i am today the production engineer i think uh, in production engineering, there is not much mechanical required, but uh, the true uh, potential of mechanical engineering. Now the voice is getting slightly cut out, like it's getting robotic. Hello? Yeah, now it's back. Uh, What's that? Uh, did you listen? No, no, I got some part, but again, sir, suddenly the middle is becoming robotic and back normal, robotic, back normal. Yours too. Mine also? Yeah. It's data issue. Could be, could be, could be. Okay, we'll manage with that. Uh, Okay, so during your BTEC, what was your sem sem semester-wise performance? Were there any lower semesters? If yes, why? Yes, sir. Uh, in the starting, sir, I kind of drifted out of study. Uh, the new college fever needs to be called. So in, in the starting semesters, like first, second, and third, it was uh, constantly between 65 to 70 percent. But in the final semester, I scored 80. Uh, the thing, uh, my percentage is going after the second year. It was consistently over 75. Two times above 85. Okay. So, what are your strengths and weaknesses? It's very bad. I, I just had written the answer in this afternoon, but I'm now not simply like mu mugging it up will not work directly. You have to just take the no, main make, main key up. points. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I made key points, but uh, the key points, the key words are important, right? Hmm. Like, uh, first thing that I one thing that I remember is that I want to do things. Uh, which others 
hesitate to do. Like, I want to do that kind of thing. So, mainly you're talking about risk taking appetite. Yeah. Risk taking plus, I think. Yeah, I, I will come up with it. Okay, again. fine, fine, oh, fine. So that's yes. one thing that you have to work on. So, what makes you think that you will like Merchant Navy for the major part of your life? So I, I would love Merchant Navy because I think uh, in the course of preparation for Merchant Navy, right, I've come uh, to love the ships. Hmm. I love I love, uh, there are two types of jobs, right? Two types of jobs, two types of jobs, and the second kind of jobs. And the second kind of jobs. Okay. And, uh, Is that all? Because you're talking about yeah. years and years and years. Yeah. About that also, sir. Uh, sir, I think, uh, I'm a mechanical engineer, right? I have, if I want, Experience on state of the art machines, right? I can only get that in aerospace industry or either in machinery or either in defense if I feel like that. So, I like this. That's the state of the art technology, right? So, I w- that's why I want to get in machinery. Okay. How do you deal with past hurts or guilt? Uh, sir, problems come in too. and uh, now if uh, for example if I had a regret about two years ago right? now today when I uh, think about it it just feels like it was nothing I was uh, taking pension for no reason at that time so uh, currently my mantra is that uh, whenever problems come I think the they will, uh, they will pass and uh, we should pass them smiling because in the future it's not worth it. Okay. So you mentioned that you have this risk taking thing and all of that and that will go to any extent to better your condition. Yeah. So how will you deal with a break of trust or disappointment with a worker, friend worker or co- co- colleague whatever? Yeah. Actually, I didn't get to yeah, hear so, the voice. Sure, sure. So you're saying that you you are the person who's willing to take risk and all of that and go to any extent. Mm-hmm. So how will you deal with a break of trust or disappointment? I didn't break how of trust. Break of trust, like broken breaking of trust. On a colleague? Yeah. So uh, I think it's it's not good to trust somebody at you. It's always good to test their limits and know them. And okay. according to that, you should find uh, their Okay. So, why gyms? Sir, so, uh, I want to join Mansi Navy for my betterment of my mission. Right? So, I think. Uh, Jesco being the biggest uh, Indian Indian I think it's the best way to do Working for India and uh, earning in India. Okay. So, draw me the valve timing diagram of a four stroke diesel engine. Sure, sir.
how should I deal with this question in the interview? Uh, so interview is offline, right? Previously, hmm. what should I do in uh, online interview? Right? I should constantly point the camera while while drawing the diagram, right? No, no, it's okay. Like because you'll basically be just drawing it pretty quick, right? So no issues. You can keep the camera as it is and just work on getting it drawn and show it out because you have to also explain the whole thing. Okay. So four stroke diesel. I have to mention the fact that in the previous interview, you asked that question about the first of all, in that I was wrong at some place. In which one? Uh, in the earlier interview, you asked about the fuel timing diagram of first of petrol, right? Yeah. Uh, in that, I showed that uh, by mistake that exhaust valve opens after the disc. Okay. It opens before that. No. Uh, turn it the other way. Yeah, okay, fine. What? Yeah, yeah, it, now it's okay. Uh, I have written the degrees also. The intake valve opens at 10 to 20 degrees before TDC. The intake valve opens here. Okay. And the uh, intake valve closes at 25 to 40 degree after BDC. Okay. Then fuel valve opens the highlighted area and the uh, rectangular box, mm. right? Mm. The fuel valve opens at 10 to 15 degree before TDC and closes after 15 to 20 degree after TDC. Okay. Okay. And the exhaust valve opens 30 to 50 degree before BDC. Okay. And closes 10 to 20 degree after TDC. Fine. Okay, fine. So explain to me the whole rocker arm assembly. Yeah. Uh, the, rocker, uh, the rocker arm assembly consists of the following parts. First is the uh, battery. Uh, so, valves uh, uh, on the uh, uh, valves, right? Um, actually, uh, I did not practice the diagram. I am practicing uh, at, at side man. I have assigned tomorrow for practicing and drawing all the diagrams. Okay. Of CFP and every the, uh, the graphs of ECRS and VAC. Okay. Uh, rocker arm diagram, but I have studied it. Fine. So, what will happen if my cam, which is there in the whole setup, is not aligned properly? It will, it will not be able to push the uh, tappet properly, right? Because if it is misaligned, if, if, if our cam is... So when I say misaligned, uh, I'm talking regarding timing. 
So let's say yeah, uh, the timings were fixed. Yeah. So what will happen? Based upon the mis- based on the misalignment, right? If it is in the x-axis and our uh, if it is upper, then if it is upper, our misalignment x-axis, the uh, effects would be different. If it is uh, in z-axis, if it is uh, misaligned in z-axis, the uh, effects will be way too. Okay. No, no. So what I'm saying is, I have the cam push rod. Everything that part is fine. The tapet, everything is proper. The cam, which is supposed to be at, like, let's say this is the position. Like this is where the cam is high. Instead of being right over here, it's like this. So what will happen? So now it is slightly it late. It'll it's still rotating. It's just slightly late. So what happens? It will mess up the whole intake valve and exhaust valve opening and closing time. Okay. Which will uh, alter uh, engine efficiency and may cause nothing. Okay. So explain the two-stroke engine in a marine uh, case with all the parts. Two-stroke engine in marine case. Hmm. Uh, I have not read this, but the uh, people which I remember, I can state that it contains the A block. Uh, a uh, foundation block on that we have the A block. In the A block we have uh, I don't know what it will I thought it will not. So I will prepare. Fine. Okay, so next is explain lubrication of two stroke engine and TBN. Yeah. Uh, in the lubrication of fuel stroke engine is done by uh, mixing both the fuel and the lubrication system. Because uh, when the fuel passes through the crankcase, we uh, need lubrication in the crankcase, right? So there is only one inlet point, that is of the fuel. So we mix it with the, uh, mix the lubrication oil with the fuel itself. And uh, that's how the lubrication in uh, fuel stroke engine works. And uh, the case with PBN is PBN stands for total base number. Uh, it's basically a uh, while combustion we produce many acidic um, uh, acidic dry products, right? And sometimes they stay in the engine environment. So to neutralize them, we use uh, PBN, which is uh, the base number of the of the Basic oil uh, neutralizes the acidic vapor. Okay. Which increases the life of an engine. So what will, what will be the difference between the TBM, I mean T, TBN in the cylinder and the crankcase in two stroke? In the crankcase and the cylinder. Yeah. Well, what's the value of the TBN? Like, is there a difference or is it same? Which is higher? Which is lower? Why? Even in the cylinder is higher and in the crankcase it's low because uh, the actual combustion is taking place in the combustion chamber, right? So the acidic by products uh, concentration will be more uh, on the uh, cylinder walls and uh, the uh, piston top. Uh, so to clear that up, TBN of oil lubrication oil in the combustion chamber is uh, comparatively low. Okay. Explain the exhaust gas turbocharger. Yes. Exhaust gas turbocharger. And the, uh, should I explain the marine? Exhaust yeah, yeah, that one only. Uh, the marine exhaust turbocharger is a device that we use to uh, both uh, the emissions that we need. And second, uh, is to utilize the, uh, utilize the uh, energy of the flow gases from the engine. And that is done by the following. The main parts of the marine exhaust turbocharger are the turbine, the mount turbine with the blades on it, uh, with blades in it, mounted on a common shaft with the uh, air compressor, 
Okay, so what he said regarding higher. why we cool the air after the compressor? Because uh, uh, when we compress the air, it, its temperature also goes up. Right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we do not want this high temperature air to go in the ignition chamber, as it may cause ignition. Okay, so that's the only point you're saying. May cause auto ignition. Okay, so yeah, that's one thing. What about? That's that's the end of the answer, right? For you. No, uh, and then uh, we have some auxiliary items, right? Like auxiliary air compressor and the uh, lube oil pumps, hmm. which uh, supply uh, lube oil directly to the bearings of both the air compressor and the turbine. Okay, fine. Okay. Next thing is why is the main engine and auxiliary engines not started on heavy fuel oil in some cases? So we have multiple uh, types of fuel on board, right? You have heavy heavy fuel oil and diesel. They're not the same. So heavy fuel is more crude oil. So why in some cases I cannot run the main engine and the auxiliary engine? On this crude oil, why do I need to run it on di- diesel? Auxiliary engine or diesel? And the engine on diesel? No, no, no. In some cases, I need to run both on diesel. Why? Mm. And the uh, other thing I forgot to mention, I will not do this. The interview, but I'm assuming that uh, we also use uh, the economizer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, extra, the extra heat of the fuel gases and takes it to the body. Hmm. Okay, explain bursting disk. Yes. Uh, bursting disk is a, like, a pressure relieving, a non reclosing pressure relieving device uh, in which we have a 
metal plate is can be made of uh, different uh, metals according to our user application. In this, uh, we have also uh, two types of vessels. The vessel is is away from the process and uh, and is this uh, able only able to resist uh, small loads, small pressure. And compared and uh, the reverse acting vessel is have the convex shape. Uh, towards the process, thus having a um, more load capacity or uh, uh, capacity to engage with more pressure. And uh, we use in uh, the practical applications are wide ranging, like we use in, uh, in uh, air compressors and sometimes compressors. Yeah, so when will it get activated? All of that you have to say. When will it get activated? What will it do? How will it the save? Process. Yeah. So you have to mention when will it get activated, what will it happen, and what will it accomplish? Yeah. Uh, when the uh, pressure, it, when the pressure exceeds our predetermined limit, the vessel test uh, will burst. In the sense, like a grenade, right? Uh, the grenade has linings around it, and when it bursts, the dead pieces come out and fly. And the same is with the busting disc. We have a cross uh, pattern on the busting disc. According to it, it uh, opens up mm. like a uh, like a banana or something. And uh, uh, by this action, uh, we are able to achieve that the pressure difference of the surrounding and the uh, air compressor, for example, we are able to balance that due to the uh, uh, now, uh, now, mass transfer of the uh, the energy also. So the question is, why is why is this high pressure taking place in the first place? What is causing the high pressure? In the case of air compressor. Yeah, in case of bursting disc, you're saying there'll be high pressure and atmosphere will be balanced. But how is this high pressure being caused? What is the root cause? In case of air compressor. Yeah, yeah. Or in case of no root uh, air compressor. There are multiple reasons, but the prime ones are first is uh, it could be the uh, inefficiency of the intercooler we use uh, that we use after every stage of the process, uh, or second, uh, the uh, we we will not be able uh, if there could be a case that not much air is coming into the compressor, which is making to uh, which is making it work harder. Or a third, it could be the radiators could have rest on it, which, uh, which would not allow uh, it to transfer. No, and no, 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 no. Be, so this will have to study. We are, we are, only, we are not considered about efficiency or coming of, or like, you know, shortage of air. This is when the high pressure airlines rupture. So in the intercooler, there's like, air which is passing right to the high uh, high pressure of this thing high pressure in the pipe if the pipe breaks high pressure air will go into the intercooler and that will cause the uh, excess pressure no that will cause uh, that was the fifth point but no but then other the things you can't uh, mention like efficiency and lack of air all that because I think first hmm. mention that why the high pressure pressure is generated right hmm. Because you say in your answer that first the air pressure is generated, then it breaks the walls. Yeah, air pressure is being generated because that is what I want. I want the air pressure to be there. No, the high pressure that you mentioned, which mm. makes the pipes break or corrode, that happens. Uh, that could be easily resolved by making the pipe strong. No, but the problem is the pipes are becoming old and that's why they are breaking. It is not that the pipes are weak. It's a yeah. fault. They break. Uh, that was my okay. Mm. The air compressor sucks in the air from the surrounding. Right? Yeah. It also, this is this. It also has some water vapor. Now, when the air compressor compresses the air, the air plus it also contains water vapor. 
I we know that voice is slightly yeah now it's yeah now it's better yeah and we makes the uh, walls of the machine corrode and that's why uh, the pipes can corrode and cause busting in the interface okay fine Why do we never run a positive displacement pump with the discharge valve shut? Because there is no need uh, there. Uh, <coughs> as we in positive displacement pumps, we are they are self priming. Plus, uh, the uh, they are, they are able to give a constant supply. It is not uh, like in the centrifuge. Is that it? So the thing is, positive discharge pump should not should not be run with the, should not should not be started or whatever or kept running with the discharge valve shut. So priming is separate part. But what will happen if we give the discharge valve shut? See, the positive displacement pumps are high pressure, hmm. comparatively to the So first thing. The thing is that they we uh, closely discharge side in rotor dynamic pumps as to not have the negative effects of the uh, initial surge in the uh, electric current in the motor. Yeah. Yeah. So that is not the case with the uh, positive displacement. Why will it not be? Same thing is happening, right? I have stagnant water which I am trying to spin. The same motor is spinning, so the power surge is there, but still I cannot keep it closed. Why? Mainly because the answer is positive displacement pump will keep on building pressure, so it will burst the pipes. Yeah, that was my question. So after that, you should not keep on, you know, try deviating. Or maybe I couldn't get the first point, so I was waiting for that. Okay, okay, okay. I will mention that it will burst because it is a high pressure. High pressure is okay, but you have to mention it, that it, it will, will keep on. It will constantly supply. Hmm. It will constantly keep on increasing the pressure because it's positive displacement. Yeah, and it, it will suddenly create a battery. Yeah. So next thing is why do centrifugal pumps not have a safety relief valve? Okay, so explain the VCR cycle with diagram. VCR cycle with diagram. With diagram. And mention the uh, fluid, what what state it is, and temperature. Should I make diagram with pencil or uh, pen in the Any pen might be slightly more clear, but it doesn't really matter as long as it's visible.
so for this you might have to speed up the drawing time under one minute for all diagrams okay. yeah. Yeah. Uh, the phone is not yet flipped, so maybe slightly more you'll have to tilt it up till it flips its orientation. Or just keep the book different because otherwise it's like slightly weird. Yeah, fine. Yeah, and explain. Yeah, uh, just voice is fine. Just voice is fine. Okay, fine, fine. Hmm. It's arrived. Yeah. Uh, the display cycle stands for data compression refrigeration cycle. Hmm. In this, we have the following uh, parts the operator, compressor, condenser, the thermal uh, uh, response wall. With the sensible plug of the screw, and the sensible bulb is uh, placed on uh, after at the discharge side of the evaporator. Now, uh, are we able to see the states and the temperature? Yeah, yeah everything is visible. Yeah. Uh, let me also repeat the all these parts. In a domestic refrigeration system, the operator is uh, present inside the refrigeration compartment to uh, take up all the data of the material inside. And then the compressor, which is at the bottom of the fish, the condenser, and then the condenser of the fish, like the curve tube that we see, and the thermostatic extension wall. So the working is as follows the evaporator uh, will be a core. Cold cold uh, refrigerant uh, enters into the evaporator. It converts into low pressure, high temperature vapor uh, as it absorbs the heat of the uh, material inside. Now, uh, I will explain the function of the TEV and sensible plug uh, separately. Okay. Condensation in the part of the compressor. And thus we obtain a high temperature, high pressure vapor in the condenser where it goes down due to the uh, exchanging of heat of uh, refrigerant and the air, and they we obtain the refrigerant at high pressure, high temperature, liquid state at 30 to 40 degrees Celsius. Then it passes through the expansion valve, where due to the sudden increase in uh, volume, the pressure uh, drops, and this drop in pressure also uh, makes the temperature drop, and that's how we. Uh, are able to produce the cooling effect. Now, the function of the TEV, right? The TEV functions uh, as follows uh, it has the inlet, inlet side, which is at the bottom of the TEV, then the discharge side, which is at the side of the TEV, which may be according to the discharge. Then, other than that, we have also have a separate uh, separate uh, cap on the other side of the uh, discharge side, 
in on top of uh, and on top, top of it we have uh, stainless steel coils which uh, directly connect to the sensor uh, sensor bulb okay and, uh, this coil is hollow so as to carry the vapor of the fluid from the sensor bulb and other than that we also have a uh, temporary orifice which we uh, put it in the section cell uh, of the tube now the electrodes uh, working the sensible uh, bulb sensing bulb also uh, contains uh, some amount of refrigerant this refrigerant uh, and the uh, refrigerant of our uh, system are not the same yeah so the bulb sensing bulb is kept uh, in contact with the discharge side of the refrigerant now if now due to the heat transfer of the discharge side of the evaporator and the sens sensible uh, sensing bulb which is made of stainless steel so it has a higher thermal conductivity the heat uh, makes the sensing bulb uh, with resident vapor and this vapor travels to the uh, coil and reaches the top of the uh, tube which in turn presses uh, we have a diaphragm like structure which presses the needle inside the tube and according to it uh, we manage the flow of the refrigerant uh, for example if, if, if it is hotter uh, if the refrigerant is hot uh, the hotter than calculated uh, at the evaporator side the needle uh, the more the refrigerant in the sensing cell will uh, vaporize this vapor in, will in turn uh, pressurize the diaphragm downwards and uh, due to that the needle uh, uh, stuck uh, at the bottom of the diaphragm will also uh, come down in okay. uh, linear motion which will open further open up the delivery of refrigerant to the evaporator mm. that's how we regulate the uh, supply of refrigerant to the whole uh, system okay so what is the one thing that this uh, sensing bulb is trying to avoid at all costs with respect to the safety of the compressor yeah the the uh, the um, we know that the compressor should not get any fluid inside right? so uh, if the evaporator is uh, if the refrigerant If the refrigerant is not able to, uh, if we deliver uh, by mistake more refrigerant to the refrigerant, mm. uh, some refrigerant may pass through as liquid. This liquid will in turn destroy the compressor because uh, compressor do not run fluid as fluids are incompressible. So one thing you are saying is saying fluid. So fluid is air also is a fluid. So you need to make sure you say liquid. Yeah, liquid. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, what are the types of refrigerants used in our domestic fridges at home and on board for refrigeration board. in the VCRS system yeah. and at home in domestic fridge? In VCRS system, uh, we use VCRS systems in uh, two types in on 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 board. Like uh, first is for the uh, ACs and all for mm. controlling the. The start of producing industry and the refrigeration system is so cool. So uh, for the uh, refrigeration of the room, we use R four zero R one three seven A and R four zero seven C, which are uh, which uh, which are used for medium to high temperature. And, uh, for the producing systems, we use R zero four R four zero four A. And R all zero seven for the provision system, and then the uh, then for the domestic use, uh, we use R thirty two ACs. Okay, so this uh, R four zero three A that you have mentioned on the sh ship, yeah, is it a, a chlorofluorocarbon? No, uh, according to the. Uh, from convention, we are replacing all the chlorofluorocarbons 
out uh, and uh, we are replacing them by HCFC, hydrochloroquine. Okay. So why does the ship not sink, but a nail made out of the same metal sinks? Yeah. This is very interesting. Uh, the ship, uh, we have studied the activities in the space that a body will float on the liquid. The thing when it satisfies its condition that the uh, weight of the liquid display is equal to the weight uh, is equal to the volume. The volume displaced of, by the liquid is should be the uh, equal to the uh, volume. The weight displaced of the liquid is equal to the weight of the. Uh, for a uh, body immune, uh, submerged, uh, partial, right? So, and this formula is low mm -hmm. To keep the ship uh, from sinking. And thus we achieve the uh, floating condition. I will work on it. Okay, uh, fine. Okay, tell me the different boiler mountings and their individual uses. What? Boiler safety mountings. The first one is uh, the water level indicator. Second is the uh, pressure gauge. Third is the pressure gauge pulp. Fourth, the visible plug. Fifth, the testing plug. Sixth, the lower top. Seventh floor, uh, uh, three, three water stop, three stop one, and eight is the steam stop one. Now, we, let me start with the water level indicator. Water level indicator indicates the level of water inside the body. And it is uh, and two water level indicators as standard on boilers. The second is Russian uh, gauge. Pressure is, is a golden type pressure gauge which uh, helps us to measure how much pressure the steam is building inside the body. The third one is the fusible plug. Fusible plug uh, is a device which is made up of uh, a high melting point, uh, which has a high melting point uh, body and a lesser melting point. Melting point or feasible material. For example, we use brass, brass uh, as the body and graphite as the uh, feasible material. So, as to uh, when, the, uh, when, uh, when the water level, when the feasible material comes in contact with the steam, it uh, melts away and this, uh, this steam then goes to the firebox uh, and uh, when the air, then we blow up cock. We blow up cock uh, in certain circumstances, it also has some maintenance functions uh, like the cleaning of slag and all. And uh, it is also a relief valve because uh, when we set the device, as it can release the excess water or excess pressure, sometimes if the maintenance air needs. In the busting disc. Busting disc is a uh, non reclosing uh, relief valve uh, which we have to change regularly. Uh, which we have to change regularly in preventive maintenance or in case it bursts. Yet, uh, it's not like pressure relief valve, but uh, it will uh, come up and sit down. But uh, we have to change the busting disc because the uh, busting material is already. Uh, in order and uh, it, it is there to, uh, to balance out the surrounding and internal pressure of the body so that it does not implode. Okay. Uh, then implode or explode uh, depending on circumstances. Then uh, the free water stop one, uh, it is uh, there in places where uh, we need 
uh, we, we we do not want the uh, boiler to be over over flooding and uh, the steam stop valve is uh, for the regulation of uh, steam output of the boiler and it's okay <clears throat> So, differentiate between water hammering and steam hammering. Yeah, water hammering. Uh, in case of water hammering, we use a uh, uh, feed, uh, feed, feed check valve. Where uh, the hammering suggests that there is a shock wave produced due to the sudden closure of the feed, feed check valve. So the water suddenly stops after colliding with the walls of the valve. And thus produce uh, the shock. And then steam hammering, uh, the uh, the steam hammering is caused due to the uh, this fundamentally it is caused due to the uh, direct uh, contact of high uh, high temperature steam and subcooled liquid, which uh, which creates uh, thermal shock waves and could make the boiler implode in some case due to the generation of vacuum. Actually, uh, there is nothing to do with the boiler implode because here is your valve. Uh, wait, why is my camera stuck? You can see my face like a hand moving. No, it's, it's work, stuck, uh, right? Why the hell is that happening now? Okay, but basically, let's say you have a valve over here and there's water over here so th when this air comes and touches the water the vacuum is only formed in front of the valve so whatever that sub liquid are talking about that goes and hits the valve so that's why the valve gets damaged nothing regarding imploding that vacuum only sucks the uh sub water and hits it on the valve now why is my webcam okay now it's back hmm yeah. So, like, if this is the valve here, here is my right, my this hand is like water parked in the pipe. Mm. So, from the valve, when steam comes and touches the water or the pool of water, mm. it will get immediately contracted because from steam it will turn into water. And what will happen is steam had much more volume water will have less volume so that will cause a slight vacuum over here look where the valve is still here so this is all happening here so this water will come get sucked and bang on the valve nothing with no implosion of boiler no, it, uh, I trust your knowledge, but i was just mentioning, mentioning it because i read it on the internet so okay in terms of I steam hammering, say, yeah, I I'm not really uh, sure on because how imploding can take place, but backflow, of steam, hmm. towards steam. Yeah, okay. actually, it's the water, the water which is getting pushed towards the boiler. But we'll come to that later. Uh, okay, so then give me the classification of pumps. Uh, pump, pumps are of two types: the dynamic and the rotatable system. The rotatable So, give me two real world examples of actual flow pumps. Real life example of actual flow pumps. Hmm. So, they can be propeller and even your ceiling fan. Because even your ceiling fan is sort of a pump because it is forcing air downwards. So mm. it can, and your propeller is doing the same thing. It is sucking water from the front side and taking thrust by pushing it to the back of the ship.
the ship propeller. No, I know. Uh. Uh, the basic condition of the pump is it first builds the fluid, the kinetic energy, and that kinetic energy converts into pressure energy. That is more happening in this case. No, because see, you have your propeller which is rotating. So that is some work that you are doing. And uh, that is kinetic energy. But that is not converted into pressure energy like in the case of uh, differential shape of the body casing. No, no. Volute casing is only in case of centrifugal pump. This is the actual mm-hmm. actual flow pump, so it will be a long pipe. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Fine. That. That. Okay. NDT methods. I think last time we had already gone over that. That was okay. Hand tools also fine. So, what is viscosity index? Viscosity index is the measure of uh, how viscous the fluid is, or to say to put it in the viewer, how much resistance uh, the fluid uh, has while it is flowing. That is what is viscosity. Yeah. This is viscosity index is basically the change in viscosity with temperature. So, is the viscosity going to change massively or not? Yeah, it will change massively. No, th- that is what that is what the index will tell you. Yeah, so that comes into uh, coolants and stuff. So maybe you can just check on that. Uh, explain transformers. I will have to prepare an activation idea that is the primary and secondary voice and step down step up. But I hope to answer you in a very clear manner. So I will do it in the next session. Okay, fine. Then we come to an end. Yeah, yeah, sure.